Ah, oh, hello. Welcome to my uh, humble abode. I am Willy Houlihan Byrne, entrepreneur, scholar, man about town, organ donor. <laughs> <laughs> I must thank you all for coming. You see, I have to apologise for the lack of space. The entire left wing is out of bounds due to that fiasco with the indoor pool flooding the extinct taxidermy gallery. <laughs> it's a jolly big rotter, really, considering I'm supposed to be entertaining guests tonight at my dinner party. I was planning on brewing that tasty dish Stephanie Von Dyke by showing her my impressive stuffed boa. But now that plan's out the window. I'll play it off the cuff. I'm sure I'll find some other way of having her served up piping hot. <laughs> Actually, I'd better bell my old school pal Jonty, let him know what's in store for him. Jonathan Everard, Edgar Fotheringe to Tweed and Biggie Hall speaking. Oh, John D, it's your old chum Willie. Willie, I was hoping you'd call. Are we still up for tonight? Oh, too right we are. I've been working bloody hard all day getting the old place up to scratch. Oh. Will you shut up? I'm trying to make a phone call. My son, I've been working since 5 o'clock this morning. Polishing the gold leaf napkins, preparing the Siberian <laughs> tiger steaks. I need an hour or two to bandage these tiger wounds. The Siberian ones really pop a fight, sir. <laughs> the day I allow Scott to laser around on my watch is the day there's a bloody female in number 10. Now go and set the diamond table. <laughs> I'm trying to get any blood on the carpet. What the bloody hell is all that about? Oh, sorry, it's just a servile class fussing about flesh wounds. <laughs> ah, yes, it's not that. It's disease or poverty or some other petty grievance. It's as if they begrudge us for being born to rich fathers. Like it's our fault they were spawned by grotty alcoholic stains. Ah, too right. <laughs> anyway, about my little soiree tonight, I was hoping I could ask a favour of you. Well, that depends. What's in it for me? Well, you see, that's just it. I was hoping you could distract that bloody actress girl, Bernadette Buss. You see, ever since I told her I was a West End director, she's been following me around like a puppy. Bernadette? She's your problem? Golly, really, I didn't realise having a fine young Jane aching to beg your bishop was an issue. <laughs> well, it's not that. I mean, of course I've tapped her resources once or twice, but it seems I wasn't enough for the girl. And now that Von Dyke skirts in town and willing to hop on board, only busting McGee out the way. What do you say, pal? This is perfect! I've been waiting for months to get that bimbo on her own. Now she's practically begging me to rumble her jungle. Couldn't play this one right, though. Wouldn't want uh, Willie thinking he was actually doing me a favour. Well, I suppose if I absolutely must, I could talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her attention long enough for you to uh, make your move. But you're lonely. This isn't the first time I've taken a bullet for you. Jolly good show. I'll see you at the manor around 8 ish. Toodaloo! So, the dining room is ready now. If it's okay with you, I was going to drag myself to the hospital to get these tiger wings looked up. Grow a pair, man, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, you Scots are always blathering on about someone having done something to you. When, in reality, you had some excellent fencing built for you on your border, for free, mine, and then we <laughs> English dragged you out of your haggis and mortar hovels and gave you theatre and marmalade. <laughs> you know, maybe a bit of gratitude wouldn't go amiss now and again, eh? I sir. I'm ever sorry for doubting your generosity and abundant goodwill. <laughs> Is there anything else I can get you, sir? Oh, you see, that's more like it, McMenamin. Anyway. Go and run me a bath, would you? I'd like to wash the muck off before that saucy gal Stephanie arrives. Kind of thinking I'm one of the servants covered in the dirt of a hard day's work, can I? I quiver at the lid, not so. <laughs> <laughs> Who could that be? Maybe it's Stephanie calling about tonight. Probably can't wait to hear my sultry tones, the tease. Hello. <laughs> Willie Houlihan Byrne speaking. Who is it? Wait! Stop putting on that ridiculous voice! You're not fooling anyone! Auntie Lily, I, I was expecting someone else! God, this is a surprise! I was hoping my auntie might have finally keeled over by now. It's so lovely to hear your voice. <laughs> oh, shut up! We both know you only stuck up to me in the hopes I'll leave you a pretty penny in my will, which, for the record, I most certainly will not be doing. The only reason you stuck up to me is so you can get my, your hands on my money. Hello? Anyway, I was just calling to say that I was in town and was wondering if I could borrow a slave. You mean servant? I know what I said. <laughs> Aunt, it's the 1920s, you can't go around saying that anymore. Oh, so what I bloody well like. I'm old, and therefore I'm obliged to be racist, classist, and disagree with anything invented this century. Look, people thought for decades... I don't care. What am I coming <laughs> And by that I mean some of them want to pick me up right away. To be honest, I couldn't 
cares? Will you got to buy one of those new thingies? What are they called? Motor cars. Yes. I'm only going because I want the free booze. If it's not cheap, I ain't buying. That's my motto. Besides, it's rather funny giving Willie the idea that he'll get a hand of my money. Like right, that will happen. Look, Archie, there's no space. I can't take you. Actually, maybe I could put up with her for the money. After all, I've been wanting a new Avery for years. Love me some tropical birds, cockatoos. The only problem is, I fear she may kill my buzz with Stephanie. God, just the thought of looking at Auntie makes me cringe. Want to know what she looks like? Just picture a curtain draped over a hat rack. <laughs> but of course, my dearest Auntie, my bed is yours. I'll keep on one of the sofas. I'll send my finest man down right away. Goodbye, Liz. Hope his finest man is a bit of a hunk. A man's that this is Hello. Oh, Christ. <laughs> 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 well, now I'm here. I'm going to take my coat, get me a chair, light up the fire. I will endeavour to satisfy your every whim. Shut up! Uh, McCarthy, how do I get the fire to rival the, um, the deep bowels of hell? You know, we wouldn't want Auntie to miss our home comforts, would we? Huh? That's the door. I bloody hope it's Stephanie. That little mix really gets my fire's going. inside the decrepit old building that is your vaguely animated corpse. <laughs> you can too. You know what your mother used to call you? Minidick. Because you'll never be as tall as your father Richard. Right. Time for me to stand up for my Willie. <laughs> Auntie, I object to the aforementioned statement with regards to my good friend Willie. I don't give a donkey's nut whether you disagree or not. Why only one nut? Oh, come off it. Everybody knows you're one bull jaunty. Right. <laughs> That's it. someone that went a bit wild on the opiate. Some water if I want to make an impression on Stephanie. Oh, yes, 
of course you are. Okay. Be a good chap and go and fetch me some more socks, would you? It's rather cold outside. But you're not going outside, sir. Well, you wouldn't want a cold willy, would you, McPresser? No, sir. Well, oh, good, so go and fetch me some socks before I get cold feet. Aye, sir. But, well, what kind of socks would you want, sir? Silk socks, cotton socks, long socks. Long socks, socks okay. Make them long socks. Long <laughs> socks, aye, sir. What do they want to wear willy socks? Well, willy wouldn't wear willy socks. What would make my willy itch? I need make willy itch. <laughs> Okay, sir. Off I go, sir. To fetch your socks, sir. Be back in a moment, sir. This is typical. He's always getting me to do his dirty laundry, so to speak. All I ever want is some respect. Maybe even some camaraderie. I mean, it's not like I've been running his affairs his whole life. Even when he was a child, when his mother was away, I fed the wee lad. And what do I get? Derogatory remarks and violence. He doesn't even use my real name. He just puts a muck on the front of whatever he wants me to do. My real name's Glenda. <laughs> what? I'm Scottish. Oh, and here's the best part. As a special treat on Christmas, he halves my daily beating. Oh, I don't know. What did I say to Sir Bloody Law? I'm just fetching your socks, sir. You're not called him a fetch or a grab. You called him a dress. Sorry for bloody dress me. Where you going, sir? <laughs> right, now that everybody's here, I suppose I should introduce everybody. Auntie, you've already encountered my auntie. Oh, and where did this encounter take place? Right here in this room. <laughs> on that chair. Well, I suppose it briefly occurred in the chair, yes, but for the most part we rolled around on the floor. Oh, <laughs> Willie, I didn't think it was going to be one of these parties. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you're poking at. Oh, you know, a swingers party. Oh, good God, no, no, no. I'm afraid you've got the, uh, the, the wrong end of the stick, you see. When I say encounter, I merely mean that Jaunty here tried to violently harass my auntie with a tray. Me! <laughs> Assaulting an older woman with a vicious weapon! I... I don't believe we've met. Stephanie Von Dyke! And you're Jaunty? Well, actually... It's Jonathan. Jonathan Everard Edgar Fotherington Tweed of Bleakley Hall. <laughs> Sounds rather bleak. No, it's Bleakley, actually. Bleakly. How interesting. Me, why don't you introduce me to your gorgeous lady friend? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Stephanie, it would be my greatest pleasure to uh, introduce you to my good friend, who is um, sat right here in my drawing room, whose name is Jamel. Bernadette. Bernadette! Of course it is. It couldn't have been anything but Bernadette. Hi, I'm Bernadette Burt. It's mistaken. I'm an actress. Mattress actress. Well, I deserve an Oscar for my performance with you, Billy. Many men, where are my socks? Well, I must say, it's a pleasure to meet you, Bernadette. And may I say, you're looking particularly busted today. <laughs> Tickle your fancy? By Jove, I'd ravage her like Queen Vicky ravaged the Zulus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think it's pushing the envelope a tad? <laughs> Who cares? It's the 1920s. The only women that object are furry-legged Umbrazilian wenches. Oh. <laughs> You're right. I was only joking, of course. Well, thanks ever so much for taking her off my hands. That's fine. I'll enjoy having her in mind. Why don't we all make up Willie, then? He's the most incompetent, incontinent growth I've ever had the misfortune to have a vague association with. He's alright, I guess. Bit of a daddy's homegrown rodent, but at least he's not a misogynist. And so I said to her, come back when you lost a stone down there and found it up here! Ha! <laughs> I've been wrong before. Well, I think he's the worst ankles. <laughs> 
You mean the bee's knees? Are you deranged? No, just American. <laughs> right, that's it. As much as I love to stay into a body chit chat with a girl whose average grade rarely extends beyond her bra size, I'm just going to go mutilate my retinas with a rusty needle I saw in the way in. Goodbye. <laughs> Bloody room. Oh, Auntie, how good of you to knock. You know, you're lucky it didn't blow your head off. Actually, it's about time her luck ran out. Oh, come on, Willie. Everybody knows you're only five blanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just remembered I need your porcelain. Uh, oodaloo. Growing up in my small hometown, I used to go to our lip skipping school, mainly on account of my bazoomers. Anyway, it helped me get into acting. Who needs talent when you've got these puppies? <coughs> <coughs> if you'll excuse me, I'll just have to go and take a cold shower. <laughs> Hi. I don't believe we've met. <laughs> I'm Jonathan. Jonathan Everard. I'd go bother into Tweed and bring you home. We just had dinner together. You were staring at my chest the whole time. And what a marvellous chest it is, too! Reminds me of the tribeswomen I saw in the Congo. Like mini zeppelins they were. <laughs> right. Raisin? How about a date? No, I'm okay, <laughs> You know, uh, you normally have melon to cleanse the palate, but I'm looking for a pair for dessert and Bernadette's on the menu. No, she is not! <laughs> The only disturbing thing in here is Auntie's face. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like her skin is trying to escape. <laughs> <clears throat> I never did thank you for your invitation to the party tonight, Billy. I'm most grateful. It's not often you come across men with such a key interest in women's rights. Ah, yes. Women's rights. They are always right. <laughs> really, you are the funny one. Pretending you don't know what women's rights are. Pretending? <sighs> Clearly, Willie failed to mention how we met. It was after the feminist marches when I'd been arrested for sharing my, um, <coughs> Victoria's Secret to a policeman. Let's not bring the monarchy into this. <laughs> and what was Willie doing in prison? No doubt on suspicion of stealing some poor girl's dignity. Trust me, Stephanie, he's not what you think he is. Oh, no, 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 no. He was there for flashing his Prince Albert in the name of equality. It was a great moment for the feminist movement. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like my attempt at winning her affections have almost failed. Time for plan B. I'm sorry, I'm just frustrated is all. You see, it's my job. I'm always surrounded by these pretty young things, but my gentleman's honour would never allow me to try anything with them. Oh, well, at least you have some morals. Yes. And what exactly is your job? Oh, it was really not told you. I just assumed what with you being an actress and all, you would have mentioned it. Mentioned what? I, too, am a director! Good golly <laughs> gosh, really? Really? Not really. God, this girl would believe I was God if I said it convincingly enough. Wait a minute. I'm also God. I'm an atheistic. Worth a try. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I'm to help you, I'm gonna have to check you out. Excuse me? You know, like, check out your talent. Oh, like an audition? Yes, an audition. Right, so off you go. But you haven't told me what you want me to do. Ah, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I haven't. Um, just show me what you've got, really. <laughs> I think I've got the idea. That's the biggest pile of bull. Oh, good boy. I, I just realised my hosting skills are subpar. I I've left John and Bernadette to fend for themselves. Shan't be two takes. <laughs> right! Well, he did say he keep her looking the other way. Now the remains for me to do is ditch that old bag and get Stephanie on her lonesome. Oh, Auntie! Where are you going? I've just remembered I've left my eyeglasses and ear in there. Christ, you can't go in there. She'll see them out of like two rabbits in a cabbage patch. No, I'm afraid you can't go in there. You see, it's, uh, it's not safe at all. 
I was in there not five minutes ago. Well, it seems that five minutes is all it takes for them to opt to it. For what? Oh, nothing. Um, you remember my, uh, my mentioning the flood in the taxidermy gallery? Well, it seems that the, um, the stuffed crocodilia, having been returned to their natural dad state, <laughs> by some freakish miracle, have been revived from their slumber. <laughs> Are you deranged? No, 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 quite sane. In fact, uh, I'm so in awe of this scientific landmark that right now I'm seeing clearer than ever. And I fear that my poor friend John T has a pair of jaws clamped firmly around his person. <laughs> <laughs> I always knew you were one for the bottom, but I didn't realise you'd driven yourself to concocting ridiculous tales behind it. Just admit it. You don't want me in there because you're afraid I'll drink your whiskey. No! Yes, 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 that's it. Oh, thank God it's out. I couldn't hide it anymore. Help me, Auntie. I have a problem. What on earth is going on out here? Nothing, nothing's going on out here. If you could just wait in there a minute. If I can just get rid of Auntie and keep Stephanie in there, then everything will be tickety-boo. Willie, the first step to recovery is admitting you have a problem. No, no! Let the crocodiles out. Crap! <laughs> Hello, everyone! Oh! Hi, John T! See you slave the crocodile? Play along. Yes! The crocodile! Huh. Nearly took my leg! But Bernadette played the beast and came out on top. You murdered an innocent crocodile! I want to report to you for animal cruelty! <laughs> well... You know, you should keep the handbag and make... You can't keep the skin and make a handbag. It's very chic. Oh! What crocodile, Jaunty? Nothing happened in there except... So the boredom is ready, Nick. Thank God, everyone! Time for entertainment. If you could all just go through there. Just follow the playman. You too. Off you go. Oh, thank Christ for that. I thought I'd never get out of that one. <laughs>